Shelling AI is a big vision of Imad Mustaq, where basically every nation and every industry sector has their own AI, fed by the most brilliant minds of that nation or sector. And while this vision sounds great, there doesn't seem to be a lot of concrete information about it. But let's have a look at what we know so far. First of all, who even is Imad Mustaq? Well, he is definitely not unknown in the AI world, because he is the founder and former CEO of Stability AI. And I think everybody who has anything to do with AI knows about stable diffusion. But he stepped down as CEO because he has a different and bigger vision. Noticing how AI development gets more and more centralized, he wants to focus on the decentralized development of AI for the benefit of all of humanity. Listen to him here. We have representative democracy that I think can be improved by this. Like I don't think democracy survives this technology in its current form. It will either improve or it will end. I don't see anything else. Like um, yesterday, the, the what does end what does end mean here? A, a benign dictatorship, a driven by an AI overlord. Yeah, like yesterday there was a announcement of an app called Hume, which had emotionally intelligent speech. And they can understand your emotions and talk with emotion. You and I have to discuss this. Yes. You know where that's going. Right? It's very like powerful. speech. It's incredibly powerful. And governments have a tendency. I mean, that, the official but government. But, is, but say, yeah, it, say yeah. it here. It's important for you to state what, what it means because we've discussed it, but help people here under, be ready for this. It, democracy is all about representation, and you see the questions of deep fakes and things. Speech is one of the most impactful elements there, but now you can't believe anything you see, hear, everything. So one path that we have is a 1984 on steroids, panoptica, you know, mm -hmm. where life is gamified and you listen to whatever the government says, and they're incredibly convincing and you're happy. And you've always been happy and you've always been at war with Eurasia, you know, propaganda on steroids. The other part that you have is things like citizen assemblies, consultative democracy, the ability to take, right now you can take any of the bills in Congress and completely deconstruct them and find what the motivations are. You know, you can check laws against the constitution in a second, seconds. This is an incredibly powerful, empowering technology from a democratic perspective. So I see two routes, unfortunately, because I think that once the right thing goes, it goes really fast. Centralized government control increasing because the government want to protect themselves as an organization. And, you know, every party says the other party is crap. We've seen the increasing polarization in America already. And, you know, fundamentally, come on, you can do better than those two leaders that are currently competing. <laughs> I'm saying this is yes. a threat. Clearly, our system is sclerotic across this. Like, democracy is the worst of all systems except for everyone else. We can have a better democracy where it's actually representative and empowers the people. Or we will have the end of democracy where it is in 1984 panopticon, in my opinion. So yes, he sees the two routes we are headed and centralized AI development potentially means more and even more control in the hands of only a few people. And as he says here, the only way to stop that or keep up with it is if you build something decentralized. If you have highly capable models, let's put aside AGI for now, which we can discuss later really accelerating, then no one will be able to keep up with that unless you build in a decentralized manner and distributed manner for data, talent, distribution, standards, and more. And I love these two clips because to me they show that he has his head and his heart on the right place. The only question now is, can he deliver on something, anything? Because it doesn't matter how great your vision is if you cannot take the steps to make it happen. But let's look at his vision. This is what we're building at Shelling, is that every nation needs their own sovereign AI that represents them. We need to make our collective common knowledge open from creativity to science, to health, to education. And that should be open infrastructure for all. And then that makes the world safer as well. Because right now, our AI systems are being trained on snapshots of the internet with all its imperfections mm -hmm. versus a high quality curriculum. Again, you are what you eat. If you don't yeah. want it to exhibit some of this bad stuff, have high quality. We need diversity as well as quality. Yeah, and this is what people are kind of going through on. So 
I think, you know, deliberately building the future where there's an inevitability of open infrastructure for industry by industry and standards around that is going to be very important. I think this is where governments and private sector should come together. Training these graduates that can go out and customize to each country, but they must reflect the culture of that country. Like the Japanese stable diffusion model we had, if you typed in salary man, it gave you a very sad person versus the base model giving you a very happy person, right? So you must have graduates that reflect the local culture and then reflect the local knowledge. And then global models, again, that reflect our global knowledge and can be accessed by anyone. So this is his idea. This is basically the world and then every nation in the world has their own AI model that is based on the culture of that nation, which sounds very great to me, I have to say. And then not only every nation, but also every sector in the world has, I make that with blue now, every sector in the world has their own AI model. So for example, an AI model for healthcare or an AI model for um, biochemistry, whatever it is, I think you get what I, what I mean. And in these AI models work the brightest minds of that field so that you have the best knowledge there and it's openly available. Just imagine what openly available knowledge with the brightest minds working on it would mean for medical advancements. So I for one love this vision and it's all open and decentralized. The only issue I have is just that we don't have anything concrete. Imad talks a lot and his vision sounds amazing, but he doesn't talk about how he plans to actually make that happen. All we have is the X account shelling AI and on here you can read through this article or paper and it basically just explains the challenges we face with AI, what is about to come and a few things that would need to change for the benefit of all of us. But nothing concrete about shelling AI itself and how they are working on this vision. So for now, and really only for right now, I cannot take a mart or shelling AI serious. I really hope for something more concrete in the next few months. And while hoping for that, of course, we also need to keep in mind that all of this is quite new and things like that just take a bit of time. But as much as I love this vision, I definitely remain cautious. Cautiously optimistic, but cautious. So yes, that's basically all we know so far. Of course, I will keep you updated if something new happens. And in the meantime, I'm sure you want to check out the video right over here, where I talk about a decentralized AI project that is a little bit more concrete.